Greetings, friends. Um, I wanted to do a video explaining who I am, where I come from, my, a little bit of my background. Um, so, uh, first of all, I was a, a scout for, for very many years. Um, I guess before that, I should introduce myself. So, my name is Amanda, um, and I am uh, 23 years old. I live in central Pennsylvania. Um, and obviously I'm, I'm trans, um, and, uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm 23 years old, trans from central Pennsylvania, but there's more to me than that. So, uh, let's go kind of far back. When I started getting into the woods, I was a little kid, um, in, like, first or second grade, uh, I saw a seminar, assembly, whatever, close enough, um, in elementary school, heard me about the Boy Scouts. So I really wanted to join. It sounded like fun. My dad had been a scout. Um, pardon me, I have the hiccups. Um, and so I joined the Scouts, and I stayed in the Scouts from then until around the time that I turned 16. And I got out because I got fed up with all the politics and the nonsense and the popularity contest, and it just it wasn't fun anymore. So I stopped. Um, in that time, I made the rank of first class. Uh, my scout masters were not happy that I had no interest in Eagle Scout. I was more interested in conservation. Um, and to this day, I remain a big proponent of conservation. I really enjoy conservation work and, and helping with it. I have not been able to do it for a little while, but I do enjoy it. Um, and uh, so uh, I learned a lot of skills. Some of them I've forgotten, but I still strive every day to live by the Scout Oath Law slogan and motto. Um, and and later I'll I'll talk about what those are because that's. Um, those are fairly pivotal to my life and to who I am and how I've developed as a person. But not in this video. That'll be separate. Um, so, uh, I, uh, after being a scout, uh, of course, a big part of that was I, I came out as trans and trans people aren't allowed to be in scouts, weren't allowed to be in scouts. Uh, especially being a trans woman, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose. At the time, the whole letting girls and Boy Scouts sing wasn't on the table. So, you know, of course, that was also part of it. And um, I came out as trans in 10th grade. And after my senior year, I, I hit a point where I really had no idea what I was going to do with my life. I genuinely didn't expect to ever make it far enough to graduate high school. I really didn't. Um, I had some very serious issues and honestly genuinely was I, I basically was staying alive because other people wanted me to i didn't really care either way whether i lived or died and that's a little heavy but it's true um so um you know i graduated high school and i i genuinely didn't know what i was going to do with my life because i didn't expect to make it that far so i spent a lot of time Sulking, well, not quite sulking, um, but secluding, recluding, reclusing. I basically stayed in my room all the time. Uh, I was awake all night. I slept all day. Uh, I would come upstairs and get food, and that was about it. And I mean, I hardly ever showered. I, I took horrible care of myself. And eventually, it kind of hit a breaking point between myself and my family that I was living with. And I left. And starting at basically since September of 2013, I spent the vast majority of my adult life now homeless in one way or another. And living so long homeless really does um, have an effect on you. You learn a lot of things, you gain a lot of perspective. Um, but the, backing up to whenever I had first left home. So I immediately basically, I, I stayed with a friend for a couple of nights and then basically the next Monday I moved in 
um, to the homeless shelter in the town that I lived in. And I stayed there for a few months. Eventually I got really fed up with their rules. They were very against having a trans woman living at the shelter. So I moved out and I started living with a guy that I had known when I was in high school. Uh, we were sort of together, it's complicated. Um, and um, yeah, so I lived with him for a while until basically until uh, he decided that he didn't want to have me around anymore. Decided that I wasn't actively looking for work, which is bullshit, but whatever. Um, and decided that I needed to be gone. Um, around, around that time, I did hear from um, a, the housing authority, which is a, it's a government sponsored something or other um, place that puts people in low income housing. Um, but I ended up spending about a week living under a bridge in the town that I grew up in. Um, and that was not the proudest time of my life. Uh, around the time that I was um, going to go in there, um, I had tried to see if I could move back in with my parents. They were fairly opposed to the idea. Um, not without understanding. Um, and uh, that's when I heard from the housing authority and I moved in there. I had I lived there for a while. Um, I had my own apartment. I still didn't have a job. My parents actually paid for the rent so that I lived there instead. As long as I was actively lo looking for a job, I had a house, I had a roof over my head. Um, I lived on food stamps. I really wasn't a home. It was a roof over my head. Uh, and it was a place to put all of my stuff. Uh, more often than not, I slept on a couch or I slept on the floor. Um, and that was it. I spent a lot of time with my uh, with, uh, visiting my parents, visiting my family, and visiting friends, but I never really was able to find work. Uh, then I met a a woman online, um, and we had been talking for several months, and it was um, the idea was floated towards me that if I were to move to where she lived, that there was a possibility of a relationship. Um, I, I was quite fond of her at the time, and I thought that it would be a good fit. So I started looking for work to see if I could find an excuse to move out there, because I couldn't I couldn't afford to just drop everything and go. Um, so eventually, I was able to find some work out there, and I got some help from my friends and my parents. I sold some stuff and raised some money, paid for a bus ticket, and took a suitcase and a backpack, and moved to South Dakota, which is 1,500 miles away from where I grew up. Shortly thereafter, the whole thing exploded in my face. Uh, and I was about a m month or so after moving in there, um, I got basically kicked out. She, she told me she didn't want me to live there anymore, that she was planning on moving somewhere else, and she needed to be gone. So then I lived with someone else. I slept on her couch for a couple of weeks until she went psycho and threw me out while I was at work. That was lovely. And during this time, I was working... Uh, with people with developmental disabilities. And I really enjoyed that work. Uh, it's very rewarding work. It's very tiring work. It's very exhausting. Um, but I enjoyed it. So she threw me out while I was at work, and yet again, I was homeless on the streets. Moved into the, the shelter in that city, uh, in the city in South Dakota, and I lived there for a while. Um, but eventually I moved out, actually when I had, find, uh, I had work, I was able to save money and get, uh, rent a room, have a roommate with somebody, um, and, uh, I 
lived there for a few months, and then I basically bounced around from place to place, and I really did never own, have my own apartment until, uh, basically until I had my own apartment. I was constantly renting from somebody else, borrowing a room, subletting, whatever, place to place. Uh, I moved something like 10 times in a year and a half, a year, somewhere in there. Um, and then eventually, finally, I had my own apartment. I had a place, I had a, a lease with my name on it. Um, and I lived there for a while and I was quite happy until I wasn't anymore. And uh, my, I kind of just slowly, steadily went downhill. Um, and eventually, Christmas, around Christmas of 2017, no, 2016, Around Christmas of 2016, I called my parents and I asked if I could move back to Pennsylvania and live with them. And they said, yes. So I did. Uh, I saved up some money, uh, borrowed a bunch of money from my parents, and um, I had, at, by that point, I had incurred a lot of debt, uh, a, lot of emo a lot of financial debt. Um, I had tried going to school because I was told all through high school that I needed to go to college. And I figured, well, since there's a college here, I guess I'll do it. But the stuff that I did there, I found wasn't really suited to me. So eventually, I ended up with about $8,000 in student loan debt with nothing to show for it, plus another 2000 or so that I owed my parents, and about another 1000 or so, a um, little bit more. Uh, that I owed to various debtors, people who'd loaned me money, people who had billed me for something and I never paid it because I didn't have the money, stuff like that. So I, I was in pretty, pretty rough straits and I, I decided it was time to, to go home. So I packed up my apartment, put it all on the back of a U-Haul truck and drove 1,500 miles to Lewistown, Pennsylvania. Um, and uh, I have lived in the central Pennsylvania area basically since I moved back. Um, it's the town that I grew up in. There's like nothing there. Um, and yeah, I um, so I lived there, have lived there ever since. Uh, and well, have lived in the area ever since. And um, you know, I moved back and it was pretty great for a little while, but I, I keep finding myself, kept coming back to this, this state of, I'm not happy, I'm at a crossroads, I don't know what to do. Um, and I found, uh, you know, I've uh, while searching around on YouTube, actually looking for um, some stuff on... Uh, on bushcraft, I actually ran across Rewild University's channel, and I have realized since I started watching it that I have um, actually seen quite a few of their videos while looking for other stuff and didn't realize it was them. Um, I started watching some of his bushcraft stuff, some of his primitive skill stuff. I was like, man, this is really cool. I want to go do this again because I used to do it all, all the time when I was a kid. Um, I started throwing together some, some gear to be able to go out to the woods, and I started doing it more and more often, and I found myself starting to feel a little bit better, a little bit happier and happier. Um, but I hadn't, hadn't really actively been going out to the woods very much, uh, and I still don't really get out nearly as much as I would like to. Um, but, uh, you know, and then I started watching some of his other stuff, some of his stuff that's philosophical um, and more mindfulness centered stuff that's more centered around the person and not as much around the wild environment or the primitive skills. I, I found myself going, yeah, this really makes sense. Um, now before I before I continue anymore, I want to back up a little bit. So while I lived in South Dakota, um, I had been looking for a HEMA club, which is Historical European Martial Arts. And I found that the closest one to where I lived was like six hours away in Wyoming. And I was like, yeah, no. 
So while Googling around for something else, I came across an old forum post that said um, that if you were looking for HEMA but couldn't get, there wasn't anything close to you, that you could to check out the SCA, the Society for Creative Anachronism. So I said, okay. Um, I, I, I Googled it, and I'm like, what is this Society for Creative Anachronism thing? I found the Society website. I boiled that down to I found what kingdom I lived in. At the time, it was the Kingdom of North Shield. Um, and then I boiled that down some more. I found what my local group was, and I, I found them on Facebook. And I found out that they were having a craft event, uh, an arts and sciences event, um, meeting at one of the members' houses that lived in the town that I lived in. Um, and she, uh, I got in touch and I went out and checked it out. I had a lot of fun. Um, I did fencing and stuff, but I wasn't really able to be all that active out there because at the time my car was in a lot of mechanical trouble. I couldn't leave the city really. So I couldn't ever actually get to that group's events. And then eventually work got in the way and I just really never got to do it. When I moved back to Pennsylvania, I didn't want to give it up. So I found my, whatever, I found the, the, the group um, for where I live. And, um, you know, I, I started looking at that and uh, eventually I, I joined, I came out for their fight practice, and I have been doing that nearly constantly for the last year. Um, I uh, have been fighting and fencing and making and reenacting and living history, and it's been a lot of fun. It's become a very big part of my life, and I, I've started to integrate a lot of different things that I do into it because so many of them have a history in that period that it's doable. Um, I've been I've reenacted off and on in different periods and different organizations for years. Um, I've done Civil War, I've done Vietnam War, I've done World War II, and now I've done uh, pre 17th century, uh, specifically 10th century Viking. Um, but some other stuff as well, and I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Now, of course, I also do uh, HEMA fencing, which is a little bit more involved, a little bit more um, aggressive than SCA fencing. I really enjoy SCA fencing, but I wanted to set things up a little bit. So I, I started going and, and learning that, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, and it's been become a really big part of my life. Uh, which it's actually the the impetus for um, time travel bushcraft and uh, for for where I got the idea for that channel. Um, there's of course nothing uploaded there yet. Um, my my nice camera that I just got broke. Um, I don't I don't know if I just got a lemon or what. But so I I now have to get that figured out. Um, but otherwise, you know I have have done quite a lot of stuff and I'm really enjoying that um, but so so following Rewild University's videos I eventually did a little series that's uploaded here about uh, sleeping without a pillow and I slept without a pillow almost constantly since I did that first um, now a couple months ago and um, it's uh, it's been a lot of very interesting introspection, a lot of very interesting personal exploration. I learned a lot about myself and about what I'm capable of in the last couple of months, um, in, at least in theory. Uh, I'm hoping and praying that the next, uh, that you know, I can I can step this up and that I can I can make this happen. I feel like this has a a real chance of being a positive force in my life, and really bringing me out of that crossroads and giving me a direction to go. Because I, I do feel like I don't have a direction still. I, I really never thought that I'd make it to 23. I didn't. But here I am, with no direction. So, but I'm finding one myself, and I'm quite proud of that. Um, 
So, anyways, uh, that's that's been almost 20 minutes now of me talking about who I am and where I've come from and what I do. Um, I've left out a lot of the more violent parts of my personal history. Of course, being trans, I've been a target of a lot of violence. Um, I've been assaulted God knows how many times. Um, and, you know, I've had, I've had quite a lot of very dark history. Um, I really don't... I do share it on request. Um, but I don't... Uh, I don't typically talk about it all that much because people, they don't like to hear about that kind of thing, which I get, but, so, um, I, uh, for, for those that are, that are interested in that aspect of my life, uh, I would be more than happy to share, but I want to do, I will do so in private, um, just so that other people aren't exposed to it unnecessarily, if they don't want to be exposed to it, um, so, other than that, um, yeah, so that's who I am, that's where I've come from. It's been a long road, it's been a hard road, but I'm finally starting to get a direction in my life, have somewhere to go. Um, if you found this interesting, you found this to be um, inspiring, anything like that, um, please feel free to subscribe and leave a comment. I'm sure that, you know, there will be some sort of interest in it, I'm sh somewhere. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, my experiences can continue to help and guide others. Um, and as I progress down this, this path of rewilding, uh, I will be leaving more and more stuff here. Um, this, this channel will be significantly more active despite being basically a side channel of the main project, um, just because there's, I'm not putting a whole lot of effort into getting these produced. I'm talking to a camera, I'm uploading it to YouTube, that's it. Um, so anyways, uh, I really hope that this was, this, this was enjoyable, and, uh, or at least interesting, and uh, stay tuned, I'm sure there will be more to come soon.